Hi, I'm Steve Schweitzer for Boomer TV at the Broad Ripple Art Fair. Welcome to Steve's Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. And I see a lot of people shooting pictures with their phones, but a few folks have cameras like these, and some even have cameras like this. So why might you want to consider a camera like this instead of the one in your phone? Better pictures more flexibility. An iPhone's very cool, it's very convenient, but uh, if I want better shots and I want to be able to adjust them afterwards, uh, crop them and whatnot, you'd, you'd use a, a, a higher end camera like this. This is an unabashed plug for Robert's photo. That's where I go if I have a photography question. I like to shop local, and their salespeople know the pluses and minuses of most cameras. Plus, I like to hold a camera before I buy it, and they can usually meet or beat those online specials you find. You just have to ask. The iPhones are great, but they're limited in low light. That's one huge advantage you're gonna have on, a, on really not even an SLR, just a high-end point and shoot. They've got a great band rocking out on the stage here at the Broad Ripple Art Fair, but have you ever tried to get a good concert picture with your phone? Unless you're sitting in the front row, it's usually anybody's guess who that is up there on the stage. You're at a concert and you want to take a shot quickly. If you shoot it with an iPhone, it works, but there might be a lot of blur, uh, might be a lot of noise that you're going to see. And if you take it with a small mirrorless camera like this from Olympus or a point and shoot like this from Nikon, you can have a lot more zoom, you can get out there. I got zoom on my smartphone, I can zoom in, but... Well, you've got digital zoom on a smartphone, so you're cropping it, you're cropping the image area way down. And when you do that, the quality just is gone. Until recently, only camera phones offered good social media connection, but that's just not the case anymore. I was actually taking a video when you just saw me. Um, on Snapchat and sending it to a friend. Wi-Fi control, so once you shoot with it, you can tether it to the iPhone, transfer images off of this to the iPhone immediately. You can then edit them on the iPhone, upload them, you're done. You so can. you could use it for selfies and put the camera someplace yep, funky. You can. And you can have this thing anywhere within the range of the Wi-Fi control, which is pr pretty far. Yeah. Have it on a tripod, control it, you can actually see what the camera can see, you can choose your autofocus point, change your exposure information, what, whatever you would normally do on the camera, you can do through the app. These cameras, the real advantage you have here is the fact that they are weatherproof and waterproof. And they're also virtually indestructible. And you say they're you nice. can drop them? You can, yeah. Well, when, when they advertise the fact that you can drop it from a distance of about seven feet, and it actually says it on here that it's shockproof to seven feet, yeah, they're pretty solid cameras. This thing will go down to 100 feet. Uh, the old one only went half of that. So now you could literally go scuba diving with one of these things and not have to put it in a housing. So to sum up, these are my top four reasons for considering a real camera. They can shoot in low light, they have real zoom lenses, or if you have special requirements like a particularly rugged camera or one that'll shoot underwater, or if you just want to control the camera settings yourself. The modern smartphones are really stunning in what they can do, but um, they don't operate with the speed of response or the convenience of response that it, a real camera does. So a camera phone won't keep you from taking a great picture, but a real camera may make it a little easier to get that shot. For Boomer TV, I'm Steve Schweitzer.